Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, as we, uh, as we join you from the very first round of the 2024 BTRDA Rallycross Championship, live from Blyton Park in Lincolnshire. It's been uh, pretty torrential this morning, and I think in, um, in, in view of the fact that, that we're now live online, the sun has come out, the puddles are drying out, um, but I'm certain that we won't be needing the Bowser to damp down the the, uh, the, the loose parts of the track. Um, so we've had two rounds of heats so far today, uh, following practice first thing, and we've got some new, new drivers, we've got a, some new cars, and of course we've got many of your old favourites come back again to do battle uh, in this uh, 2024 season. Um, just lining up on the grid as our first our first race of the, of the third heat since the uh, 4x4 production, which is a, a two-car affair. Max Lang made in his Mini All 4. And, uh, and then Thomas Romanuskas in his Mitsubishi Evo 4. And, oh dear, straight away we have young Max pulling over. Uh, so I don't think we'll be... He'll be Putting it a time. Meanwhile, Thomas is um, is giving it large in his own inimitable fashion. In what well, is sadly the the, um, the the only particular car in his class here today. Uh, regularly in, in the vast is on battle with Subaru Impressors, with characters like Chris Baker, Dan Beatty. Um, who would love to see again sometime in the in the future? I think Chris Baker is is uh, is potentially losing the power to the front wheels to make his his Subaru a rear wheel drive uh, racer in the Super Modifieds. But Thomas, who's who's been campaigning this particular Mitsubishi Evo for for some years now, is um, is well on his way to posting a good time. Because of course, at this stage of the post of the proceedings, it's all about timings. Though not so important for Thomas, because he, he and Max are duking it out to take place, uh, take their own places in the final later on after the third lots of heats, which we're currently watching, have finished. So Thomas taking, make it large again on on that one loose, loose part of the track. This is a, a, an elongated version of the Flighton Park track uh, from, from what you've uh, probably seen in the past. We started using this particular layout mid-season last year with an extended run, which Thomas has now demonstrated to us, followed by a hairpin and another long run down to a 90-degree right-hander, where we then have the chequered flag for the last time only. So under braking, sweep right, and then almost immediately to a 90 degree left for the start straight. Thomas making sure that he stays within the white lines and on the tarmac. We have had a few, few drivers running wide at that particular point earlier on in the day, particularly when it was much more greasy under, under the tyres and 
as a result of that, it's possible that, that uh, drivers may pick up a penalty for driving outside of track limits. Uh, ducking and diving under power and through the bumps. Thomas Romanaskis continues on his merry way. In between the cones and off to a sharp left-hander. Gentle sweep to the right before the run to the far hairpin. A rerun of a little incident between the, the two, which looks like it's broken. Uh, Max is steering. Yeah, rub, 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 clash. And you can see at the front of Max's Mini, the, uh, the, the two front wheels are doing their, their own thing quite used to the idea of having independent suspension but independent steering doesn't work so efficiently so Thomas is now on his last of his four laps in this particular heat it's in quite a lot of incidents on that first sweeping left hand bend uh, during the course of the, the first two rounds of heats quite so dramatic when uh, when Thomas is on his own but still it gives him a lovely opportunity to uh, to, to have a look at his car and see the Montpellier uh, building services adver advertising on the side of his uh, of his car so it's hard on the brake sweeps left again for the last time takes the chequered flag, marshals there with the red flag to show that the race is stopping and to go back to the uh, to the paddock, which he duly does. We have had a couple of drivers during the course of the morning who, uh, who will not be named, who have uh, forgotten that after the chequered flag they go back to the paddock and then have done a lap of honour, which is uh, not what we want at all. I suspect now we'll have a slight delay as as young Max has his car recovered back to the paddock where I would hope that uh, that his, his dad Chris and the team will have um, other necessary bits laying in wait to be bolted onto the car to fix the steering. Hopefully drive shafts are okay, um, meaning that we'll be able to see Max racing in the final a little bit later on.
welcome back. Uh, sorry for a little bit of radio silence in the last few races, uh, some technical issues at our end, but we're just here to see the, the second of the heats for the, uh, for the Super Modified category with uh, Richard Moore leading the way, that, uh, leading the field away with his uh, monstrous Mercedes-Benz SLK V8. Um, Richard had a bit of a torrid time this morning in the wet conditions, uh, these dry conditions that should suit him and the car that much more. It's a lot of power on the fairly short wheelbase and um, it, it, did, it did spin the car earlier on. Um, but the, uh, the second heat, see it, it posted a time of 4 minutes 36.6. Some other times, so uh, we have a little bit of comparison. Um, was it coming off the uh, off the hairpin? A bit of a, a bit of battle here um, with Gary Foot in his wearer sponsored Ford Fiesta. Um, he posted a four minutes thirty-four in the, uh, in, in the second second heats which were that little bit drier than the earlier first heats. And consequently quicker times. We're therefore expecting our quickest times of the day so far to be this round of, of, uh, of heats that you're watching us watching with us now. Uh, there we've got, um, we've got young Corey Paget in another Citroen C2, like his father's, um, Phil Chicken, in, in the previous race. So the running order at the moment, Richard Moore, followed by Gary Cook, followed by Corey Paget, and um, in an unusually um, last place for, for him is, um, is Todd, Todd Crooks. So unfortunately Richard has, um, has succumbed to the, the horrible uh, more power than grip uh, at the hairpin and spun, spun his car, which is uh, a great shame. See how long it takes him to get back onto uh, onto the rear bumper of Todd Crooks, who's currently in third with Gary Cook um, leading, the, leading the way. Uh, Todd was tripping up over the Corey Paget going into that in, into the first corner. You see the uh, you see the see the wheels going in slightly different directions, and um, doesn't seem to have made any, any lasting problems for. Uh, This particular mini for five or six years, um, having 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 cam uh, campaigned a, a very similar mini before that, the next David Binks car, which uh, took an almighty tumble um, coming off the uh, off North Bend at Lydon Hill some years back. Um, I was I was there not far away from from the incident when I um, really thought that, that Todd was a goner. It was quite a horrifying tumble. Uh, many times over. Todd got away with it with um, some, some uh, significant bruising, particularly on his foot, because he planted his, his foot instinctively on the brake pedal as the car was up in the air and, and uh, barrel rolling multiple times. Uh, Gary Cook, who knows his way around this circuit and who knows how, how to drive a rally cross car, being a, a, a former BTRDA overall rally cross champion driving an uh, MGZR. It's a one point eight engine in this, this particular uh, Fiesta. It's well, unlike the Fiestas that you, that you would buy ten or fifteen years ago in uh, from the showroom in that it's rear wheel drive. Not unusual in rally cross um, circles to to take a front wheel drive production car and make it rear wheel drive. There are many of those over the over the, uh, over the 50 something years of rally cross history. There had been a huge puddle on the on the exit for that bend, there's still a little bit of it there. Uh, but Gary Cook has a win with Corey Taggett second, Todd Crooks third, and our spinner and former leader Richard Moore with his wonderful sounding uh, Mercedes. And there we have Steve Ratu, 
um, with an MGZR, much much like the one that, uh, that, that Gary Cook had raced some years ago. Um, Steve making a, a, a return to uh, to Rallycross. He he was with us at um, at Pembury last year, and and uh, he's back again. We hope to uh, to do a, a full assault on the on um, on the championship for this season. I suspect that there's there's a few problems um, that need to need to be ironed out with that car in order in order to get its turbocharged Audi engine to uh, to give of its best on a reliable reliable style. Meanwhile, uh, and we're losing no time at all, we have the have the minis coming out onto uh, onto the track to form up for their third heat of the of, of today. As I say, this being the first uh, the first round of the 2024 BTRDA Clubman's Rallycross Championship, um, our fastest time uh, so far in 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 the minis in in the first and second round of heats um, looks to be um, Ben Sayer, number 77, with 4 minutes 25.314 in the first heats, a little bit slow in the second heats, and Wesley Wickens uh, was next fastest, no he wasn't, David Ellis was next fastest in um, with a 4 minute 27.298 which is in the second round of heats. So we have Lynn Wellin in pole position on the left of your screens. Uh, Lynn had, had joined us at Pembury last year for the, um, his first ever attempt at, at Rallycross um, from his usual discipline of rallying and um, obviously took to it like a duck does to water um, by, uh, by winning one of those, one of those rounds. Carl's off. Oh, a little bit more tripping over. It seems to be a theme for the afternoon. Is someone pulling, pulling off already, possibly with broken steering. going out to uh, to the hairpin. We, we saw Ben winning one of the, the heats earlier on today. He's probably got caught up in that mayhem going into the first uh, into the first corner. In second place, the car looked white as it was approaching us. It is black. This is a bit of uh, a bit of mud that's flung up from the from the loose section, but, uh, giving it some sort of disguise. Regulated, all 1600 supercharged minis. Um, 
very limited uh, modifications that can be made to brakes and suspension. There's lots of safety kits applied to them that wouldn't have been put in by the BMW dealer originally. Um, some, some of these cars have been built from, from scratch as race cars. Others have been road cars that have been converted. You should, depending on the skills that you have, maybe a cheaper way into the sport than, um, than, than some other, other categories that we have uh, racing here today. The day of Ellis has been still sort of, uh, of the DTRDA for, for many years. Obviously, enjoying the combination of the Mini with its good handling and reasonable straight line speed with the twisty circuit that we have that we've seen recently demonstrated there and here at Blyton Park. Pleased to see that no one so far has, has grazed the, the tie wall on the inside of that bend. Um, so over the years, I've seen quite a few people have, have, have come to grief. At that particular point, ending up on their roofs, which is uh, it's not what we want to see. We want to see good close racing and not bodywork damage. So, Dave Ellis takes the win, followed by Lynn Llewellyn, and the rest of the field coming behind. Four.
suspension, um, the suspension settings, um, braking, and um, just the, the guts of the driver's concerned. An exciting and very much growing category within the VTRDA Rallycross Championship. Um, and for some reason, they're being very shy for us this afternoon and heading back into the into the paddock. It's the first time that we've had so many of the um, of, of the cross cars out or, um, at, at a meeting that we've had uh, two lots of um, of heats, which is is good to see. coming out to uh, to form up on the grid it's a combination of uh, it, not just engine sizes but also configurations um, some of three three cylinders uh, if we get the chance to listen to Ansco Pickenens which is a, a, a white cart number 56 uh, it's a three cylinder which qu quite quite beautifully growls in much the same way that a Metro 604 engine does uh, particularly driven by Rob Gibson. So our start line officials are officiating at the start line, which is the best place for them. And when they're satisfied that everyone is in the position to uh, that they should be in, in relation to the timing beams, make sure there's no jump starts then it looks like Chris Chris Humphreys um, will be uh, will be checking to make sure everyone is ready to race has their attention to the board um, for the start signals we'll then have two orange get ready to race signs followed by a couple of green arrows go 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 So nearest to us on the left-hand side is Liam McMullen in in um, number. Ooh, no, it's not. It's beg your pardon. It's Jack New Newman in pole in number six. And Liam McMullen on the far side in number 29. And away they go. good that's the first time this afternoon we've not seen anyone knocking into anyone else coming into that first corner and positions much as they were on the, on the on the grid at this moment so if you're listening to the uh, to the live stream and thinking this sound, sounds very much like motorbikes, that's because they are powered by motorbike engines. So that explains that one for you. Uh, the carts are incredibly light and and powerful, with significantly more power than they have grip, which then meant like the conditions that we had this morning in the in, in the wet meant that drivers have to be very circumspect, very careful, and uh, to avoid spinning um, in, in pretty much their own length. Conditions now much better for them. And we should see should see speeds and times improve significantly over the first two heats from this morning. Seventy-three. There is um, is, uh, is Max Weatherly, who's a previous uh, Suzuki Swift winner and um, modified champion. Um, took to uh, to double driving last year between his Swift and and, and this particular buggy with uh, with great effect and with a huge smile on his face. He posted a four minute fourteen um, time this morning in the second the second heats. Might have been even faster if he hadn't got his Cheshire Cat grin under his uh, under his helmet. But, um, 
loving his racing. He's supported by, uh, by, by his family. As are many of our runners and racers here today. So. 47 was Dom Fitney. We saw him pass by just, just briefly. Dom's more more used to be seen in, um, in his, his Volvo C30 supercar in, uh, in the Five Nations Championship and before that was uh, re regularly seen in his Subaru Impreza with flip speed sponsorship. First time that I'm aware of that uh, the Dom has has taken to battle with, uh, with, with a car. Judging by the smile on his face, I saw in the in the paddock earlier on. He looks like he's enjoying himself. So on the right hand side, there's Max Weatherly just giving giving best to Dom. Dom Flitney. Both experienced dri drivers and racers. You can expect to see to see this close race continuing right to the, right the chequered flag. And there we are, the curse of the commentator. What have I said? Newman taking the uh, taking the checkered flag in first position. Be interesting to see how Jack Jack's time compares with uh, with his best time so far. Four minutes thirteen point zero three six uh, in um, in the second round of heats, which is only slightly faster than he's already fast. Four minutes fourteen point nine zero one in the first heats. So by my reckoning, we should now have some more. FIA cross cars and they are indeed queuing up ready to be released back out out of the paddock and onto the track as soon as the marshals have confirmed that it is safe to do so Drivers to watch out for in this race will be number 55 Richard Reese and uh, 581 David Kane, who um, they both posted times in the 4 minutes 11 there or thereabouts. Uh, Richard Reese bat battling out particularly hard um, on his on his first his first heat and showing good racecraft and speed. And you'll see there's perhaps more of a more of a variety of of carts in this particular race than there was in in the previous one. Um, the differences are quite subtle. So number 32 in pole is Stephen Burke on the left-hand side of his screen. So Richard Reese is in the second row on the uh, nearest to us. One to watch. Unfortunately, one of those cones has uh, <laughs> has hit been hit. Oh, never mind. The racing continues. Bouncing like miniature dune buggies over the loose, the suspension moving a lot. Lovely to see.
that's 32, Stephen Burke, whose best time so far is a 4 minutes 25.6. loose again. Yeah, already in the, in the field is a little bit, a bit strung out, so the little battles all the way through. Concentrating on another one. from Finland, who is a, uh, is a stunt driver by, by profession, um, enjoying her second outing in, uh, in one of the FIA cross cars. Third heat, I should say. Finishing with a little bit of a flourish of overstand and back to the paddock.
our race that's just started is the production class with the Alpha 147 of Mark Henry leading the Honda of, um, of Alex Fletcher who won the championship last year uh, at this particular category. And behind him we have Martin Peters in a, in a Saxo and, uh, and then Daniel Griffiths. Only the four of them entered in this particular class this, this time, unfortunately. Uh, it's usually, a, usually quite well supported, the, um, the production class. It's one of the uh, most expensive ways of getting in, into motorsports. There goes Daniel. As Mark Henry comes ploughing towards us, uh, he started his second lap. This particular Alpha, um, Mark has been developing and, and running himself uh, for for the last ten years. This is its eleventh season in in, um, in combat, in battle, in, in rallycross. Uh, it's a car that's that's uh, that's been fairly reliable um, in, in in recent years after a fair bit of time developing it. Where others who are perhaps running Fiestas or Saxos and, and other cars that have been well well supported and uh, Mark has been going it alone uh, r running and developing the uh, the Alpha pretty much on his own and today seems to be one of those times when that, that's paying paying dividends he won the first heat this morning and the best time and uh, second the second heats were run by uh, won by by Martin Peters, who is currently in third behind Alex Fletcher. Big one. Uh, sorry to Alex and, uh, and his, his many fans. Um, he did win the second second heat. Uh, Alex is, is here with, uh, with his, his teammate Gary Cook, who we saw racing earlier on. And a number of their of their students, or what I would call a student, but these days called learners from Loughborough College, who are are learning hands on uh, everything about motorsport uh, as they, they do their motorsport qualification, which involves them preparing and and running the car, uh, preparing it before the meeting and running it during, like checking temperatures of tyres and oil and doing any running repairs, listening to the feedback that, that Alex, one of their lecturers, gives them and making changes to suspension rates or ride heights or um, whatever else. Uh, th this is the first meeting of the, of the 2024 season and for this season uh, and onwards we have uh, a new supplier of tyres, MRF, who have got a big history of, um, of of supplying tyres in, in, um, uh, for, for rally uh, for rally cars. This is their, their first year providing tyres for rally cross, which is subtly different. Uh, so some of the drivers are having to um, well, trying out these new tyres for the very first time today, and not every size has been available. So uh, people like Alex are running tyres that are perhaps a little bit bigger. Bit wider than they used to, having which resulted in Alex having to make some changes to the suspension um, ride heights and, and and some of the suspension geometry to ensure sufficient clearance. So, Mark Henry has the win, Alex Fletcher second, Martin Peters third, and then just a short short gap to Daniel Griffiths who, to be fair, is still learning the car and and uh, get getting used to the wonderful world of Rally Cross. I spoke with him earlier on, I spoke with Daniel earlier on and um, a big big smile on his face, he's thoroughly enjoying everything he's, he's doing and I expect as as he gets used to the car and the, and the racing that, um, that, that he and the car will get quicker. 
And we're also expecting more cars in, in this particular class, the production class, for future races, uh, future meetings. And the season takes us to um, the Pembury Circuit in South Wales and to Lydon Hill. Uh, we're back here at Blyton in Lincolnshire uh, in the summer. And, and uh, after another, another trip to, to Blyton um, in September, the season finale for us is, uh, is in its traditional position, at Knock, the Knock Hill Circuit in Scotland. So we certainly get about a bit, and all are very much welcome, whether spectating or racing. Just having a look from my vantage point within the paddock to see who's lined up next. And at the moment, it looks like no one, no one, uh, unless the cones are going to be racing, which I somehow doubt. But here we have the classic category, which has a wonderful variety of cars, of manufacturers and types. And leading as he has done in the first two heats is Mark Jones from, from Wales in his, in his Toyota uh, followed closely by Jamie McBain now we've seen Jamie racing in Peugeot 205s as, as is this one but this is to him a new car recently rebuilt uh, for, to, to rally cross spec and after a little, little problem with, um, with a steering um, steering rod coming adrift this morning and he then went went on to win the second heats and is as he did on that first heat uh, the second heats is chasing Mark Jones followed by Alan Tapscott who's been racing in Rallycross for about 30 years now uh, it's wonderfully prepared Mark to escort I'm sure that, uh, that, that many people, myself included, th when they're thinking of classic valley cross, will immediately think of escorts. So there's Mark II, followed by the Mark I example of Dan Swayland and the Vauxhall Corsa of Thomas Edmonds. And you can't have valley cross without a Mini, and there's Helen Crooks in her classic Mini and with the 1275 engine. Unfortunately, the only Mini uh, en entered today. Uh, there was a, a time 30 years or so ago when there, would, there were entries of 40, 50, maybe even more Minis in various classes, um, such as the dominance of the little VMC Battler. So Alan Tapscott giving a lot of pressure on Jamie McBain, who's... who's um, his 2024 season's well and truly underway, and uh, even before this meeting today for Jamie McBain, he's, he's been been rallying uh, with with uh, Peugeot 205s with sequential boxes, rather than the usual H pattern gear boxes required in the uh, in the classic category. Uh, Alan Tapscott desperately wants second place. As, in, as much as he wants second place, Jamie wants to hold on to it. Of course, whilst, whilst Jamie is perhaps driving a little bit defensively, he's letting Mark Jones get away and he's spun. Mark has spun there in the middle of the screen. Marshall comes up straight away with the yellow flag to, to show that there's, there's a hazard. And for the second time today, Jamie McVeigh has pressurised Mark into... Um, into a mistake. That, there goes Mark Jones with a beautifully prepared Toyota. And Jamie McBain's next sweeps past, probably with a little smile on his face. Maybe a yeehaw, I don't know. Uh, to now start the last of their four laps for this third heat of the Classics. 
So, running order, Jamie McBain, followed by Alan Tapscott, Dan Swayland in the white Mark I, Kent Movers, sponsored Escort, and Thomas Edmonds in, in a Corsa, which has, he, he spent, spent the winter months rebuilding it after a somewhat catastrophic um, incident last time out. Uh, lovely to see young Thomas back in the, uh, in, in the paddock. And really, this, this, um, he, sh he should be very pleased with himself, he, even if he is towards the end of the, uh, this particular field, because this is the first time out in, in competition for this particular car. Thinking of, thinking of re rebuilt cars, Jamie McBain still holding on to a lead under brakes, a lot of pressure from Alan Tapscott. And I dare say Jamie is very, very pleased to see the chequered flag and goes back to back to the paddock and back to his uh, to his awning to to park the car up and recover and well done to alan tapscott for 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 such a such a, a clean race and we're putting so much pressure on on jamie but also um, condolences to to mark jones for um, for not getting the win that he looked like for so long, um, being able to bag for himself. Uh, of course, that does have a detrimental effect on his time for the heat and therefore his position for the, for the final later on. I'd expect that we'd see Jamie McBain uh, in pole position for that particular final later on, um, though I am not one of the stewards, so I may be wrong. Our next race this afternoon is our juniors, all racing near identical, or it should be identical, 1300cc Suzuki Swifts, although other makes and models are, are allowed. Just not represented here this afternoon. So our fastest uh, qualifier so far is Ty Ratton in car number 244 with the best time of 4 minutes 55.344 and second fast though Benjamin Bartlett in his first first heat did beat that by four, uh, with a 4 minute 53.784 unfortunately did not finish in the second heats so he has it all to play for. It's car number 444, Benjamin Bartlett. So these drivers in, in, the, in the junior class are all between 14 and 16 years of age. And we have got Benjamin Bartlett in 444 leading the leading the very closely packed field as you'd expect because the cars are identical looks like Ty Ratton in 244 very close behind young Benjamin All keeping it close and keeping it fair. Lovely to see. Really. One could argue the races of tomorrow, but frankly, they're showing that they are the races of today as well. Take 
Ty Ratton's under a, a lot of pressure himself, as well as trying to get past Benjamin Barrett in Bartlett in front of him. He's uh, also trying to fend off the, the the attention of our third place runner. I'm trying to work out who that is. This particular category um, was dominated really last year um, by, um, by Will Ovenden and oh, I thought I thought, I thought we had some, had some paintwork ex exchange there. I'm so glad that didn't happen. We want to see fair racing, but we don't want, we don't want to see uh, some accident damage. But these, these drivers, they're, they're, not, they're too young to drive on the road, and here they are doing very well for themselves. Um, race, racing very accurately and quickly on the on track. So to finish off my train of thought from earlier on, it's Will Ovend and, and Tyler McAlpin who, uh, between them, sewed things up in the junior categories um, last year, winning every race between them. So now's an opportunity for uh, for the other guys to shine. And Benjamin Bartlett's doing very well for himself. And he and uh, Ty Retton are just pulling out a lead. Pulling out a gap there. As we've seen many times before in motorsport, it just needs... Uh, a missed braking point or a fumbled gear change and things can change over for so quickly. So that Benjamin Bartlett accelerates away from the a little wiggle there up to the up to the hairpin at the far end of the track to then come in to the checkered flag just past that there tire wall. It's a very mature drive by, by Benjamin Bartlett. And uh, I'm sure we'll we'll see we'll see a lot of Benjamin and, and Ty and the others in the field uh, as we go through the season looking forward to seeing them develop with their, their race craft and their pace bodes very well for this for this year and, uh, and indeed for future years
right, we can now see uh, see the marshals walking across the track, which you wouldn't normally get in, in a live live race track. Uh, this is the gap between the end of our third heats and the start of our finals. Um, there'll be a bit of time between um, now and uh, and the the grids being published for the for the finals. And uh, so apologies, uh, there won't be very much to to uh, to, to look at. Uh, for, the, for the next few minutes. Also, apologies that um, that I'm having a little bit of difficulty seeing the numbers uh, on uh, on some of the some of the carts and cars racing, um, as I've got a very very small uh, monitor to uh, to look at, and and it's not possible to actually see see the numbers very clearly. So apologies for that. Um, we've got a few technical niggles at this end, so uh, it's it's not been a normal. Kind of commentary as uh, as one would expect, um, but um, I'm doing my best, folks. I'm doing my best, and I'm sure you'll uh, you'll you'll enjoy the enjoy the forthcoming uh, racing and fi- as as we start the finals in a few minutes' time um, of one final for each of the uh, of, of the categories. There are of course subcategories within those categories, uh, um, meaning that um, that we have. For instance, for instance, classics um, are above and below particular engine sizes. Um, so we've we've got um, we've got Helen Crooks in her in her mini is is actually in the category on her own, and um, so she's not in direct competition with Mark Jones, Jamie McBain, and Alan Tapscott, who are in the uh, um, in the the 2000 CC and over category so it does sort of suggest that um, that there's a lot of prizes to be, to be uh, to be earned and a lot of racing will happen shortly so just for a few minutes uh, I shall I shall leave you now's a good time to make a cup of tea or coffee if that's your preference and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes thank you
Welcome back to Blyton in Lincolnshire for uh, the first round of the 2024 British Trials and Rally Drivers Association Rallycross Champion uh, Championship, uh, where our first our first final of the afternoon, the first final of this first round, is uh, shortly to take place. Uh, no prizes for guessing. It's the uh, FIA Cross Cars that are out to race first, and the marshals are just sorting sorting out the uh, the drivers so they are in the correct positions. We've we've had a wonderful situation where we've got so many um, so many cars entered that um, that we have well, we're not able to get everyone in in the final together. Meaning that our first final this year is a B final. Uh, the winner of the, um, of the B final will then go to the, the back of the grid of the A final, who are uh, drivers who have already qualified as being the um, the fastest times in their category. So no prizes for this particular final. It's all about getting getting the win and getting on to the grid for the uh, for the A final. Looking at my little screen, it looks like number 47, Don Flitney, the uh, Volvo supercar driver and former Subaru and Pretzer campaigner, is leading, or was leading until he went wide into the into the hairpin. Now it's on the blast back to the uh, to the last corner on the first lap to finish their first lap, and yes, Don Flitney continues leading the field. And along the start, the start, um, start straight on his second lap. Flitney uh, has, has a family, a little bit of history in, in, in rallycross. Supported the supported the uh, the sport in a number of different categories, uh, in, including the, uh, the the four wheel drive categories within the BTRDA. So it's Ansko Pikkinen from Finland, with that beautiful sounding um, cart of hers, number fifty six, and there's forty seven. Starting his third lap of five, our finals this afternoon of five laps. And Dom has certainly uh, been, been pressing ahead and has quite, quite a healthy lead now. One of our um, few lady races here this afternoon. Uh, we've, we've had uh, quite a few lady races um, in, in recent years, including Michelle Swallow in her Porsche Boxster and Amy McGuinness in her BMW Mini. Um, and we need more ladies. More ladies should be joining in, and 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 girls in the in the junior class. And so, come on, ladies. So. Um, Let's let's see you out there on on the uh, on on track and competing with the, with the boys.
So our winner, number 47, Don Flitney, returns to the paddock, uh, where he and his team will quickly prep the car, top up the fuel, and get it ready for its uh, last outing of the afternoon, which will be the A final for the FIA cross cars, which we will see in a short while. Meanwhile, the rest of the field make their way back to the back to the paddock. The marshals scour the track to make sure that everything is safe and as it should be. And we are then able to crack on with our next final. So our very first A final of the year, as we kick off our 2024 season, we'll, we'll see Thomas Romanaskus in car 888, the white Mitsubishi Lancer, uh, or the Evo, Lancer Evo, eight, uh, no, Evo 4, beg your pardon, let's give it its full title, um, in competition with number 15, Max Langmaid, in the BMW all four mini, the four, four wheel drive mini, 1600 turbocharged engine in, in, in that little whiffer snapper. And uh, Thomas has a, has a two litre turbocharged engine at, um, at his beck and call. Our pole position here at Blyton is on the right hand side, so the, the inside line for the, uh, for the first corner, which is the conventional way of doing it. Not all the time, but um, most most often it's that way. And here, the um, pole position is on some concrete uh, back from World War II when Blyton Park was an airfield, and it doesn't give quite the same amount of grip as the uh, as the tarmac, which Max Lang made is driving straight at us on. Uh, what's going to happen here in the first corner? Hopefully not a re rerun of um, of the first corner mishap from heat three but they are neck and neck my word you get a feeler gauge between the two and Thomas just went a little wide there and um, causing young Max Langmaid to go a little wider still and slow him down uh, and thereby take a lead but there's only a car length two very very different machines here of course the the Mitsubishi Lancer and Subaru Impreza have phenomenal rally history and pedigree. And the BMW All 4 Mini is, um, is, is a much newer vehicle. And more often seen on the, um, on the school run, perhaps. Um, but here, and, and as, as in pre the last couple of seasons of, uh, of PTRDA Rallycross, um, running as a category themselves or subcategory and Max is clearly he has something to prove ah what a move wow takes the inside line for the, for the exit of the of the corner and therefore it's Thomas uh, Romanaskus who has to um, has to go, go, go skyward now I think there's a little bit of something going on here with these two, and they're both going off the track. Oh dear. <coughs> we might have to let the stewards um, decide on this, but um, they both left the track completely, um, which is very unfortunate. It's good to see that, that Max has got the car back uh, moving again and is, uh, is then taking, taking back to the track. Thomas Romanuskus continues his way um, on the track to uh, ready to finish his first his first lap of uh, of six 
So the B final that we saw just now was um, five laps. This A final and the subsequent A finals will all be six laps. Now Thomas has clearly got um, got a bit of an issue there with the um, with the, with the tracking of the car. It's crabbing. It's not running um, forwards in the in the normal way. That will be as a direct result of the of the collision that he had with uh, with Max. Now with the car having sustained some damage to the to, to the suspension and possibly steering as well, um, we will we'll have to wait and see if, if Thomas can actually run run the full length of the uh, of the six laps. It's very disappointing to see the see the two cars collide. Um, that whilst they're running in the same final for the uh, for the modified 4x4 they are in different subcategories so they could have both come away with a good points haul towards their their season total but instead we we see Thomas Ramanaskas's rather battered um, Mitsubishi working its way round the round the track and um, Max Lane made unfortunately has has pulled up and retired it's a great shame for the uh, for the youngster. He's come up through the uh, through the through the junior ranks and winning the winning the junior category two years on the on the trot. Um, moved up to the all four mini category last year and uh, won that um, very convincingly. And yeah, so this is this is his um, sort of fourth year in rallycross, um, unless I'm much mistaken. And would have been hoping and expecting to to have had had a, had a clean run with with, uh, with Thomas, um, and what a magnificent overtake manoeuvre that that was of, of Max going wide into the first corner at the end of the first straight there, and then diving inside Thomas uh, for the uh, for the tight exit of that first corner. A um, little bit of bodywork contact and um, unfortunately between them that that contact continued we see we'll see uh, Thomas's car with the rear wheels not running in the same tracks as the front wheels uh, testament to the the damage that's been carried that's, that's, that's been done to the um, to, to one or more of the of the wheels or the uprights the suspension in that particular car, which looks rather poorly already, and here we are at the season opener, and Thomas has got some bodywork repairs to do, and I, I dare say that uh, Team Langmaid will have some re repairs needed on on their all four mini as well. Not the way that we want to see the season start. As I said before, rally cross is a non-contact sport. And that's the way we like it. I dare say that there will be an, an, an investigation by the stewards at um, the completion of the race.
So our second A final of this afternoon is is a super modified final uh, with a real variety of of cars, which is uh, it's good to see. I like like a variety. That said, I like the close ra racing of, uh, of the single make formulae as well. So in other words, I'm very easily satisfied because I love me rallycross. I dare say you guys too do too, which is why you're why you're tuning in now. So we expect to be under underway very shortly. The the front row on the right hand side there we've got Phil Chicken in car sixty two with Todd Crooks forty eight in the middle. That's his racing number, not his age. And steaming up from the second or third row is uh, David Bell on the right hand side there in his mini. But in the black mini is Todd Crooks. Hello, Steve Ratui. Ratu, beg your pardon, Steve. And taking a bit of a spin with his MGZR. So, Todd Crooks leads David Bell. Right behind him is Johnny Crisp in, in the blue saxo. So, two very different minis lead the way. Johnny Crisp with two near identical Citroen C2s. Father followed by Son, Phil Chicken followed by Corey Paget. Todd safely around to finish his first of six laps. There's Johnny Crisp, followed by Phil Chicken. Followed by Corey Paget, I beg his pardon. And then behind, behind Corey are the, are the two red cars of, um, of Richard Moore in in the Mercedes and Karen Whitley in the, uh, the the diesel Polo, making wonderful moves. It's a race similar to the one that we saw Max Lanamade do in the previous race. And. my vantage point I can, can hear Richard Moore's delightful V8 Mercedes tearing away what a wonderful sound that is so Todd Crooks uh, he spent he spent a few years with his with his uh, with, with his uncle Duncan um, fettling and, and improving that, that Mini into a, what is now a very rapid and reliable car I do hope that's not commentator's curse Certainly, Todd is leading the way in a, a modern Mini, unlike his mother's classic Mini, um, that's Helen Crooks, whom we will see in the Classics category a little later. So, in between the two red cars, we've got Gary Cook in his Ford Fiesta. Um, so there's Johnny Crisp, followed by Cameron Whitley. The diesel, let's see if we can see the diesel as it, as it powers away from the corner. Yep, then little, little black wisps. Oh, it looks like Johnny, Johnny Crisp has lost a gear or some, something's happened. Uh, lost, lost two, two positions since the, um, in, in the course of one straight. As Gary Cook goes, thank you very much. I'll have that place from you. But Johnny's not finished. He's come, staying up on the inside of the hairpin. It now means he's on the outside of the next bend. Looks like Gary Cook has just sealed the deal and got far enough ahead and and Richard Moore is desperately trying to get past. This is action all the way up and down the field here. Don't quite know where to look. So there goes Gary Cook. He also works at the College. And they've got five of their of their learners from the college with with with, uh, with them. That's Gary and uh, and his his teammate Alex Fletcher. 
both work at Loughborough College. And there's, uh, as our leader goes out of view to, take, to, uh, to start his next lap, there's uh, second and third chaps, David Bell, under the close full watch of Phil Chicken. You can see there how how Todd has really got himself a, a, a very very healthy lead there. He's able to do exactly what he wants to, place the car exactly where he wants to for, for maximum speed. Meanwhile, David Bell is fending off the ongoing attentions of Phil Chicken and his Super 1600 Citroen C2. Phil's just lost a little bit of bit of speed and just getting a little bit wayward, perhaps out of frustration maybe. Uh, but he's it, just lost lost some ground there compared with that with David Bell, who says, "Right, I'm off. I'm going to see if I can do anything about this uh, black number 48 Mini ahead of me, which is there, our leader, Todd Brooks." He's now starting his last lap. Phil's continuing to get a little bit wayward, perhaps, and it's going wide into um, in, into that into the start straight. Oh, my word, that was close! And Johnny Chris just closing the door as he's allowed to, um, going into the corner there. Todd Crooks. A very, very distinctive Mini. She always seems to ride a little bit higher than uh, than, than the other Minis, such as uh, that used by, by David Bell. So, I shall leave you and um, go and have a little chat with him for the, uh, for the broadcast later on.
Our mini competitors fly off the grid in their A final. There's a bit of a squeeze going on. Oh my word. Eek. Twirling round and round. That's not the way to go around the corner. But, uh, four into one, don't go. So a bit of bodywork damage to stain. I think that's uh, Lynn Llewellyn in, in second. Now David Ellis, who's our current leader, he's he, he put a couple of heat wins um, to his name this, um, earlier on uh, earlier on in the day, giving him a front row start for the final. And uh, he sure as heck isn't going to waste it. He wants the win. But Lynn Llewellyn, he also wants the win. And maybe his car goes a little bit faster because it's a little bit lighter. Probably not make not make not making much difference at, at all in, that, in, in actual fact. Oh, hello, we have a red flag. Oh, ben Sayers' car um, was deemed to be in an unsafe position, which is such a shame. De um, ben had, had, had been very much on the pace right through the day uh, this morning, and we were expecting big things from him, but he gets caught up in the middle of that front row, um, oh, on the outside of the front row, just gets spun around and then gets another tap. Uh, that's possibly what what's taken the uh, the bit of, bit of the front wing from Lynn Wellin's front bumper. But round and round Ben Say went as a bit of a passenger in his own car. Um, I would think that the uh, stewards will put that down as a racing incident. Uh, can't help but feel for for the, for the driver who's who's ended up with his car spun and no points for the for uh, for his efforts um, but that as they say is motorsport who said that no oh, i did just then uh, so the marshals put the put the uh, the tire wall back where it uh, had originally been and uh, ben say will make his way back to to the paddock because normally Well, the convention has always been that um, the car responsible for the red flag doesn't rejoin. But, uh, there we are, there he is. Well, I thought Ben Say was in the last chance saloon, but he's got a second chance. So, our pole position... Um, the car on the right hand side is that of Dave Ellis in the middle of the front row in the middle of our screen or was then just now uh, was uh, was Lynn Llewellyn our uh, ex-rally driver in only his second meeting in Rallycross and uh, and then on the on the far side is Ben Sayer who will be hoping for a better start and a longer race than, than we had the first time out Harvey Harmon is in the second row in the light blue car next to, or nearest to us. And behind him is Alan Laidler. Uh, alongside him on the back row is Gus Glass. And by a process of illumination, um, number 51 should be Wesley Wickens on the outside of the second row. 51. Wickens, there he is. The we Wesley was leading one of the one of the heats earlier on today, when uh, he he was under a lot of pressure from Dave Ellis, and unfortunately mistook the uh, the clutch pedal for the brake pedal, and then outdid himself. And there we have Ben Sayer being told, "I'm sorry, as you are the cause of the of the red flag." Though the incident wasn't necessarily your own fault, uh, nevertheless, you were the reason for the red flag to come out. Therefore, you're not allowed to continue with the final. So Ben will go back um, with his army of friends and supporters. Uh, very well supported, that young man. Um, but he'll bounce back and be with us next time out at, at Pembrey. And... Uh, I expect he'll, um, he'll have something to prove. So, 
Steve Ellis in the Proctors uh, sponsored Mini is in pole position and alongside him the only other car in the front row is that of Lynn Llewellyn so that actually gives Wesley Wickens in the second row a slightly easier run because he's now got a clear run to the first corner without having to get past Ben Sayers' car but what will happen it looks like Lynn Llewellyn has got the run on Dave Ellis and takes the early lead stamp hard on the brakes final bit of this corner Alan Laidler goes wide at the back of the field but everyone else is all very close together bouncing over the rough one of those things that's always been fascinating about Rallycross the mixture of, of, the, of the tarmac and the loose and Dave Ellis he's determined look at that he's edged himself back into the lead into the lead for the first time in this race clearly wanting to uh, oh hello uh, Gus Glass gets it a little bit wrong going into the into the hairpin but back on his way again We've got the scream of the supercharged 1600cc minis barreling into the last corner to start their second of six laps and where these cars are so so similar in, uh, in setup it really is about the drivers and ability and, and how smooth they are and Lynn Llewellyn just gets the run on Dave Ellis uh, to take the lead back again thank you very much I'll have that back I want to speak to Steve at the end and get the trophy he's probably not thinking that at all but um, he's very very competitive This isn't, isn't finished yet. Very, very close behind. Um, this is where Lynn can perhaps open up a little bit of a lead because he's already on his throttle as Dave Ellis behind him is still going around the corner. As they come screaming in at the end of the second lap. Lynn well in, in the lead. Dave Ellis second. Um, Harmon in third in the in the sky blue or baby blue mini behind him. Third place. I think now the race is has settled. There's a little bit of a bit of space between them. There's Wesley Wickens in a uniquely liveried car, which is. Uh, Quite, quite attractive, makes it easy for me. Thank you very much, Wesley. And Lynn is still do, having to fight hard to stay ahead of, uh, of Dave Ellis, who desperately wants, the, wants that win, doesn't he? And if things, if, if our leaders tangle, then uh, then Harvey Harmon is ready and waiting to pounce. Another lap down. So the main field seems to have, seems to have uh, left Alan Laidler behind, unfortunately. It's one, Alan's car is one of, one of the whole, whole flotilla of cars looked after by MB Motorsport. It's Michael Boak and his team who have been responsible for preparing and running the Citroen C2 cars that we saw earlier on of Phil Chicken and Corey Paget and the the diesel uh, the diesel polo of Cameron Whitley. Uh, Michael Bogues of course, of course has a lot of experience of running diesel cars in Rallycross having been um, having run his own diesel powered Audi TT for many seasons before concentrating on running a team and more recently as well getting a Skoda supercar uh, which he hopes to be out again in time and opportunity willing so our leader in the welling comes into the first corner for the penultimate time 
that's last but one, for those who don't know. Um, Wesley Wickens is trying all sorts to, to get out on the back bumper of our crawling Armin. The two of them bouncing and frolicking along in the mud before getting back to back to the tarmac, avoiding those those nasty tyre walls. And Lynn Wellen's car seems to be lighter than ever. There's less bumper than before, surely. Superchargers whining away in much the same sort of way that um, the classic minis did with their with their uh, gearbox in sump. That was the transmission sound. This is purely the sound of the supercharger. Idiosyncratic. Scrabble of tyres as the as our two leaders take the corner. Still not much between them, just a fluff gear change or just the slightest mistake. And uh, Dave Ellis will, will pounce, I'm sure. There's a lot of pressure on, on Lynn at this stage. In fact, right way through the race, thinking about it. Can he stay in front these last two corners?
So I'm back with you again now for our production final with Mark Henry in his self-repaired Alpha 147 leading the way. Though not for long. Alex Fletcher and his, uh, his Honda desperately trying to get past and just giving second best for the time being. Uh, letting Mark Mark continue in, in, in front. Uh, as Martin Peters bouncing over the over the rough. Dan Griffiths in uh, in car number 68 is the fourth of our four runners in this uh, somewhat smaller than usual production final. And whilst second and third, Martin Peters and Alex Fletcher have a little squabble. And let's Mark Henry go off into the distance. And Alex Fletcher catching some water on the inside of that last bend. And putting the hammer down and, uh, and chasing Martin. It's one of the features of Rallycross that I've always enjoyed is the camaraderie that, um, that most most racers have with their fellow racers and their respective teams. And there's always help going on and a bit of leg pulling and uh, and a genu general genuine friendship. And for those who come along to spectate, as I did as a nipper. The paddock is open, so you can come along and have a look close up and see the cars, have a look inside them, have a look at the engines, talk to the drivers and the team, and as long as they're not busy doing repairs, they're, they're usually more than happy to do that. And Alex Fletcher uh, from, from Loughborough College. Uh, he's um, running in running in third, having won the the category last year, and um, we'll be very keen to add another little sticker to the side of his car. Uh, so we can expect good things from him right way through the season. But at the moment, having to give third best in this race. Martin Peters in the in the Saxo there. This is an unassuming little car. Um, but Martin certainly knows how to pedal it well. And it wasn't that long ago that um, the production class would have uh, perhaps 10 or 12 Saxos, and unfortunately they are becoming more and more difficult to come by uh, for a little car that produces a lot of power for a 1600 and a light body weight, body shell that handles well. It's a good combination in, in competition. And there's Mark Henry winning his race.
Classic 8 final finds Mark Jones from Wales leading in his uh, in his Toyota with Alan Tapscott deep in the West Country right behind him and Jamie McBain right behind him so nothing much in it and Thomas Evans and Dan Swayland behind with Helen Crooks in her mini and at the back of the field there's really not much to, to separate these three leaders um, races earlier on this afternoon all had had Mark Jones leading and then uh, being forced or pressurized into a spin uh, what's going to happen here will he keep keep control and uh, bring home the glory and the victory he certainly hopes so meanwhile the old campaign of Alan Tapscott I hope he doesn't mind me calling him old um, is uh, not giving not giving Mark any room pulls out to try and run alongside but the straight line speed of that Toyota is quite quite something and then as we know from rallying in the 70s and 80s we know how well Mark II escort that's been well prepared can handle and of course isn't just about straight line speed it's about the handling uh, on the on the wiggly bits and across the two surfaces the time and the loose so Wales' own Mark Jones still leads carefully positioning his car but under <laughs> continuing pressure from from Alan Tapscott who goes up the inside what's happened goodness me wow what a manoeuvre um, will will Alan be able to defend no no Mark Jones he uses that that amazing power from his from his Toyota the, uh, turbocharged car to uh, to get back his position and Alan Tapscott has to uh, try and plot his next move meanwhile Jamie McBain no it's not it's oh gosh Thomas Edmonds um, had suddenly gained places and uh, found, found himself momentarily in second place gosh and we've seen some great manoeuvres overtaking efforts on that first bend so far today but nothing quite like that unfortunately for Thomas it didn't quite pay off and uh, he now finds himself way down so Mark Jones in his in his Toyota continues on his way so that's car 12 leading car number one on tap stop and uh, Dan Swayland in the Mark one escort number 22 comes in third
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that race half as much as I did. Because if so, it means I enjoyed it twice as much as you. And now, our next race, our next final for this afternoon, will be the uh, the juniors. Once um, once the the um, injured, poorly car of Thomas Evans is returned to safety in the paddock. And here we have a review of what happened. There goes Thomas in second place, around the outside. Like Buffalo Girls, around the outside, and just, oh, lost it. Such a shame. It was quite an audacious move, that one. If you, if you got it to stick, that would have been quite something else. But um, never mind. He, he'll be back to fight another day. Uh, the car's pretty much as new what it was at the start of the meeting uh, and a, a, a rebuild after after some uh, some some terrible uh, terrible accident last time out lots of damage to repair uh, both both to the bodywork and the suspension as well as other mechanicals um, the uh, the car has has had an awful lot of work carried out by it um, on it over the over the winter um, by by Thomas and um, yeah we saw a little bit of what it what it can do which uh, which ogres very well for uh, for later in the season so although it might be a bit bruised and disappointed I dare say that Thomas will be able to take a lot of positives out of uh, what's happened at this meeting here at Blyton Park in uh, what is now quite sunny Lincolnshire starting off the day through to uh, lunchtime with umbrellas and wet weather gear and now I'm wondering if I should get the Factor 50 out you can see Thomas in his race suit in the black and white walking along with one of the marshals to a point of safety whilst his car Gets uh, taken by the telehandler back to the back to the paddock, where it'll be put either on his trailer or beside the trailer for Thomas and his team to uh, to to sort out, secure, and then drive home, ready to fight another day. So now our juniors, our 14, 15, and 16-year-olds, uh, they they might sound like they'll be novice drivers but um, oh boy they they know what they're doing and uh, they they'll you know, as, as we'll see they'll race well and uh, usually they race very fairly something that's that quite took me last year and the year before was the comradeship and uh, s support for for each other in the in the paddock uh, really whoever won was um, was cheered on and supported and congratulated by their fellow competitors which is uh, wonderful to see so our contestants this afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, number 119 Teddy McPherson 244 Ty Rutten 444 Benjamin Bartlett 707 Elliot Fuster and 999 Hayden Harris all driving on this occasion um, identical 1300cc Suzuki Swifts, which are much like the car that you could have bought from a Suzuki garage in the early 2000s, uh, but with the interior stripped out, a race seat and roll cage in, in place, fire extinguishers, electrical cutouts, and some changes to the suspension, but really very little else. And they're off. These might be the slowest amongst the least powerful cars that we'll see racing today, but the racing, as we've seen so far today in this category, is close. So, Benjamin Bartlett's in blue car has got a slight lead over Ty Rutten in the white one. Just getting a little nudge there, little, little tap. And they're still side by side. This is not going to work. But it does. Putting some of their more senior fellow racers to shame. They kept it clean and 
Ty Ratton is our new leader. Very good racing, very mature, level-headed racing from from both of the both of these young guys. Now, with an open track in front of him, what's Ty Ratton going to do? How much clear space can he gain? Breaking into the first corner. Ty Ratton, Benjamin Bartlett. And again, apologies that uh, the screen I'm looking at to try and commentate from is tiny and I can't see the numbers. So I do apologise to you and, and indeed the guys racing uh, for, uh, for not being able to call out the numbers as often and as clearly as I'd like to. into the heaven again and away so Benjamin Bartlett there in second he's keeping the pressure on the race leader Ty Ratton who he's not allowing to get away but can he get closer and apply some pressure pressure that these young shoulders um, need to try and absorb and deal with. All very good experience. And, uh, in the past, some of the some of the current drivers in World Rallycross have started their racing career in in junior swifts such as these, and um, as, as a way of getting experience on, on proper race tracks in in cars that have been prepared properly as, uh, as, as race cars and in very close comp competition with, with, with other racers equally hungry for victory. Great way to start for anyone to, to start their, their racing career or if they've already started in, in carts to get, to get into, you know, behind the wheel of something bigger. I think we've been able to work out that 119 Teddy McPherson is in third place. And apologies, Teddy and family, that it's taken so long for me to, to call you out. Teddy's in fifth, isn't he? Because our our leading two have have actually opened up such a gap that um, they've not been on the screen at the same time for a while. Uh, but here they are. Maybe to finish another lap. I can say that um, Ty Ratton has just eked out a little little more space, a little more ground on Benjamin Bartlett. We saw leading and winning one of the heats earlier on today. So our two leaders having a little race of their own, and the rest of the field are battling it out, the three of them. And bouncing over the over the rough once more and to do that one more time before the end of this race. So our leaders have gone round the hairpin and heading back to, uh, to start their last lap as the rest of the field are heading to the hairpin. Wheel of tyres once more. 
as the MRF tyres are put through their paces. And ready to do the, the start straight for one last time. Keep it tidy, keep it quick. On to the rough again. Smooth round round there. Good driving. Avoiding that, that, that ominous stack of tyres on the inside of the bend. Ready to to hit the hit the hairpin one last time, but not literally. And Ty Redden should be our leader and our winner. Congratulations, Ty.
Our FIA cross car A final is well and truly underway. Um, the first of six laps coming to a conclusion. These little devices are ever so rapid in a straight line and handle very well. Requiring absolute concentration all the way through. Made slightly easier this afternoon in sunny and drying conditions compared with, with the uh, slip slide away that we had this morning under heavy rain and then continued rain and sustained showers which is about the, the variety of rain that we had during the course of this morning's first two rounds of heats drying up a little bit around around three heats and uh, now here we are under wonderful Lincolnshire sunshine for the, uh, for the vinyl so desperately trying to work out on my little screen who's winning One one one. There was uh, Will Butler. We've seen him winning winning races in this category in the BTRDA and last year and the year before. It shows the strength of this particular category, which has grown to the point where now we have for this meeting we have 11 entrants. Hence, we've had to run the, the B final earlier on, which we saw Don Flitney win, uh, which means that. He uh, secured his place on the A final grid, albeit on the back row. But he was there, and you've got to be in it to win it. These these carts are uh, quite a handful, and uh, the, the, the performance is is very similar, meaning that, it, that starting at the back of the grid is very difficult to make up enough places. But because the vehicles themselves are only only small. Here we have the one or, or, or two abreast, sometimes even three abreast, um, where there might only be one car at a time in some of the other categories. So uh, there are some opportunities to overtake. And I strongly suspect that's number 55, Richard Reese. And we, we saw quite. A, a, a dominant performance earlier on today under, under the mildly moist conditions that we had then. Uh, that's an understatement in case you wondered. Uh, it was very, very soggy indeed. So, Richard Reeves, the, the blue cart number 55, and that's Will Butler number 111. Again, getting in amongst it. And 47 there. That was um, that's Don Flitney, who uh, who we saw winning the the B final earlier on. He's made up a few places. But perhaps not as far as he would really like himself. So 73 there. That's Max Weatherly. The biggest smiles in the in the paddock. Oh, uh, that's unfortunately Don Flitney um, saying saying cheerio at this stage in the race to any uh, any chances of getting on the podium. this sixth and final lap oh hello it's not the best way of going about that corner without breaking and himself and a bit too much uh, lock up on the rear and send the back of the cart out of control and uh, ends up through the cones backwards so easily done so laps of concentration just for a, for a moment and uh, all the good work in the rest of the race away